It wasn't long ago that I had the privilege of spending some time with a, a remarkable lady called Hei Wu. She's North Korean, 70 years old, and hands down, one of the most energetic people I've ever met. But Hei Wu's life has been full of trauma. In 1997, in the midst of a great famine in North Korea, Haywoo's daughter, in her mid-twenties, starved to death in her own home. Haywoo's husband escaped to China. He found God. But sadly, he was caught by the secret police. And six months later, he died in a North Korean prison camp. Haywoo said to me, I was shocked to hear that my husband had become a Christian. But instinctively, I knew that he had found the truth. It wasn't too long after this that Haywoo herself escaped to China. And like her husband, through a series of events, became a Christian. And as she spent time thinking back over her faith, she came to the realisation that her mother, who had died a few years ago, had been a secret believer. And she said to me that one of the deepest regrets of my life was that I was never able to share my faith with my mum. A few years after this, Haywoo was caught by the secret police. She was repatriated to North Korea and placed into a prison camp. As she told me this story, she said to me, I was lucky. I was only sentenced to a few years, despite the fact that I was Christian. As I spent time talking with Haywoo about life in these prisons, and she told me stories of death so rampant that bodies would lay on the ground for three or four days without being cleaned up. Stories of mental and physical abuse that would make you sick to the pit of your stomach. I couldn't help but wonder, what is it about people like Hey Wu that, that makes them risk everything? for the privilege of being in a relationship with Jesus. But more than that, what would I risk for the same privilege? You see, in the middle of one of the darkest places on earth, Haywoo chooses to do something so radical, so dangerous, and so Christ-like. She said to me that in the middle of this prison, God gave her a heart to evangelise, a heart to tell my fellow prisoners about Jesus. And so right here in the middle of a North Korean labour camp, a secret fellowship, a secret church begins. I asked Haywoo to tell me more about this church, more about what it looked like and she said to me I didn't have a Bible and I knew very little but but I would share with them the verses that I knew we would meet in the pit toilets the most horrible place within the camp a place where guards would not even go because of the smell and she said as we met there we would pray and we would recite Bible verses And we would sing hymns of worship and praise to God. It's absolutely incredible. You know, I was recently asked one of those questions. It stays with you for weeks. One of those questions that kind of reverberates around your mind and captures your every thought. You see, someone asked me, if Jesus Christ walked the earth today, Would you follow him? 
You see, Jesus Christ was radical. The way he spoke, the way he taught, every single thing he did was radical, but absolutely incredible. You know, this idea of this smiling, happy Jesus that kind of, he gives you everything, but calls you to nothing. It just doesn't sit right. It's stories like Hei Wu and, and other people who are regularly persecuted for their faith that brings a perspective unlike anything else. People who obediently, selflessly, and courageously follow Jesus. Hei Wu had a church in a place so putrid that no one dare go near them. Inside a prison, where if caught, you would be tortured and killed without exception. What's your response to that? You see, we serve Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world, and a radical. And our response to that should be to uncompromisingly unashamedly and passionately follow him whatever the cost.